Hi everybody and welcome to this intro presentation on Advanced Ideas course called the Complete Personal Development Course. Now this is 22 courses in one package. This is going to give you a huge body of knowledge. I call it a mini PhD in psychology and success. You're going to absolutely love it. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You will never see this again. My trainings are specifically designed to transform lives. I've got over half a million satisfied students. That's this year alone. They love these courses, they're applying these courses, and their lives are being transformed. I want you to be my next success story. That's why we put such a huge package together for you. Here's what Chris Gehring says about this course. He says, Professor Paul never disappoints. I own all his courses and this one is amazing too. You'll be shocked how fast the course goes by and wishing it was longer because it's packed with so much life-changing information. I believe it gives you a huge advantage in life. Thanks again for this amazing course, Professor Paul. So what are you going to learn inside this course? The first one is psychology. Why do people do the things they do? This is going to give you insight into why other people do the things they do and why you do the things that you do. This is an amazing psychology course. It will help you understand so much of how the human mind works. The next one is persuasion strategies. Now, this is how to both persuade yourself and others to get other people to do things and to get yourself to do things. This is a master skill of people that are successful. Communication. This also is about how you communicate with other people, but also, and equally importantly, how you communicate with yourself. REBT. This is gold. It stands for Rational Emotive Behavioral Therapy. It's the most effective therapy known to man. It's literally the science of how to reprogram your mind. That's worth the price of the course by itself. Next, you got another style of psychology called Neuro Linguistic Programming or NLP. This is literally how you duplicate success, but it's so much more. Zen Teachings. This is worth the price of the course by itself. This is a whole new view on life, a whole new philosophy on life. Zen is literally the, the Asian version of science, of understanding reality. Until you understand Zen, you don't understand your world. Time management. Your life and your time are the same thing. If you can't manage one, you can't manage the other. If you lose one, you lose the other. People that are bad at Time management are losing years and sometimes even decades of their life. A transformational leadership. This is the best leadership course you're ever going to learn on how to deal with the people that you're leading. Nine, networking skills. This is how to get out there. You know, they say it's not what you know, it's who you know. This is how to get to know those people. Ten, motivation. This is motivating both yourself and others. Kind of like the persuasion, to get yourself to take an action and to get other people to take an action. Put this together with persuasion strategies and amazingly powerful. 11, how to deal with difficult people. Everybody needs that one, right? 12th course is coping skills. How can you not have a training on coping skills? How to literally cope with life. This is why people are so stressed, which is the next one. I even drill down even tighter and go into stress management because that's a major area. Affects your health, affects your mental state. Every area of your life can be damaged or enhanced by how you deal with stress. 14, customer service. This is a great one for people that are in business or work inside a business. How your company does, and even if it continues to exist, will be based on customer service. It's one of the greatest ways to boost your profits and to beat out your competition. Parenting skills. If you are a parent or ever want to be a parent, if you don't have these parenting skills, you have no idea what you're doing. This will give you a mini PhD in how to be a parent. Parenting is amazingly complex. 16. Physical and mental health. You got to boost your physical and mental health if you're going to have the energy and the vitality to master life. Freedom from pain and from pain to power are two other advanced psychology courses and they're going to help you deal with old pain, old frustration, old issues. It's going to give you a ton of new coping skills, ton of new philosophies. It's going to help you understand yourself and others better. It will literally free you from pain and take you into power. I love this course. 
It's huge. It's super long. They're like four, four and a half hours a piece. That's how much information you're going to get. Beating anxiety and depression. These are like the number one killers in America. They'll either literally kill you because you'll suicide or they'll destroy your life. They'll kill all the joy in your life. You need to know how to deal with these. Also, there may be people in your life that have anxiety or depression. You need to know how you can help them deal with these things. If you don't have the tools, you can't do it. Success rituals. What are the things that successful people do day in and day out that help them to be massively successful? And the follow-up to that is life skills. If you don't have basic life skills, you don't even know how to live your life, how can you live it? Correct answer, you can't. See how comprehensive this is? This is over 54 hours of content, huge course, top quality, taught by myself. I've got four different degrees all the way through the doctorate. I've been out there gathering this information for 35 years, and now you're getting it for pennies on the dollar of what people used to pay for this. Here's what Austin Armstrong says about the course. This course is amazing. It really helped me develop a new mindset. Professor Paul's wonderful and provides a lot of insight and actionable advice. I highly recommend to anyone trying to develop true mastery. Here's what CEO Pete Kichi says. It was simple. Once I had the right tools, my success was guaranteed. Professor Paul made it easy for me. This is a crazy amount of information. It was my marketing expert who said put 22 courses together. I said, how about two courses or three courses or six courses? He said, no, Paul, we have to overwhelm people with the sheer amount of value. And I said, okay, you're the expert, let's try it. But you are getting a crazy amount of information. Like I said, this will never be repeated again. So if you're ready to transform your life, if you want to change the way you see the world, if you want that kind of life transformation that gives you an unfair advantage in virtually every area of life, go ahead, let's get you started. Act now, sign up now, and we'll see you inside the training. Okay, a few quick goals for this training to really drive home the value. One, increase understanding of ourselves and others and the world around us. Like I said, if you don't understand how the game is played, you cannot win. Two, to see past illusions. Most of what you believe is true is actually false. How much? In excess of 99.99%. If you believe a lie, if you buy into a lie, if you believe what you've been bought and sold, what you've been taught and told that is a lie, your entire life will be a lie. And everything you do, everything you try to achieve, everything you try to accomplish, Will be based on a false premise. You're not going to win. Illusions is one of the major reasons you're not making it in life at the level you want to and can. So we're going to take that anchor off your neck. Three, understand why we are the way we are. A lot of people put too much pressure on themselves, too much blame on themselves. They don't understand why they are the way they are and what has happened to them over time. By understanding why you are the way you are and how you became that way, it'll take a tremendous amount of pressure off. It'll give you new insights, new understanding, and new freedom. That's the next thing. Four, release old pain from the past. You are not your past. If you had a great past, it's over. If you had a terrible past, it's over. We move from here forward. And I'm going to show you that all the old pain that happened in the past, it wasn't your fault. And we're going to teach you how to release it so you don't have to live the rest of your life in pain. Five, using this new awareness to help ourselves and others. As you understand why you do the things that you do, you'll be able to free yourself. You can also use these insights to help free others. You can use these insights to be more successful in life, to be more motivated, more influential, you have so much potential and you have been held back because you didn't have these core concepts. And because your life is enhanced, you'll be able to go out and help others. A beautiful thing to do if ever there was. So here's the first concept that you need to understand. People are amazingly simple. We complicate people. They are amazingly simple. As you look at these concepts, you're going to realize that it's a cause and effect reality. That the concepts are simple, 
but then we layer on all these stories. There's so much confusion. There's so much pop psychology out there. It's all rubbish. We're going to clear all that away. People are simple. You just lacked an understanding of why they are the way they are, which is what this course is for. And it's the layers of BS that make them complicated. What is BS? Well, I use this cute diagram to show exactly what it is with an X through it, but I call it belief systems. Your BS, comically put that way, shows you what your belief system really is. It's a pile of crap. It's a bunch of lies, distortions, misinterpretations, other people's agendas. It's a huge pile of crap. So, always remember that BS is what it is and that a belief system is also BS. This will help you through the entire course. Now, this is your first major psychological concept. People always move towards pleasure and away from pain. I'm going to say that again. They move towards pleasure and away from pain. This is literally the whole of psychology. If you take nothing else away from this course, learn this. This is the science of how the brain works. We are constantly weighing out pain and pleasure, doing cost-benefit analysis, and moving in the direction of maximizing our pleasure and minimizing our pain. It's why we do everything. Skinner, who is kind of the king of cognitive psychology, said, if I can control the circumstances, if I can control your pleasure and control your pain, I can get you to do anything. He has never been proven wrong. Now here's what confused Skinner a little bit, but he finally figured it out. It's not just pain or pleasure, it's perceived pain and perceived pleasure. When you're a little kid, if you're bad, your mom wants to inflict pain, she spanks you. Now there's some guys running around out there that'll pay extra for that. <laughs> Why? Because they've misassociated pain with pleasure. They think getting a spanking means pleasure. It's somehow sexy. So they've confused it. You'll see people that do this all the time. You'll have two things taken as totally different. Like when I look at people in the gym and they're lifting those heavy weights and I see the strain on their face and the sweat and you can feel the pain in your muscles, I go, this is massive pain. I want to get the hell away from this. <laughs> they look at it and say, no pain, no gain, baby. I'm getting tough. I'm getting strong. I'm getting buff. Chicks are going to dig me. And they keep pumping and pumping and pumping. I'm going to outdo my buddies. They see that pain as massive pleasure. They've used mental alchemy to transform pain into pleasure. So that's a good way of turning pain into pleasure, perceived pain, real pain into perceived pleasure, right? That's a good use of it. Other people have associated pain with certain things that could be pleasurable. Like for most people, one of the top 10 fears, it's usually in the top two. People have two major fears in life, dying, or public speaking. Now sometimes public speaking is number one. That's where you get the expression, I'd rather be in the in the box than giving the eulogy. <laughs> People are so afraid of that. But I used to be afraid of public speaking and now I do it for a living. Why? I associate pain with being up on that stage. I said, oh my God, this is terrible. People are going to judge me. I'm going to screw up. I'm going to crash. People are going to be laughing at me. I associated massive pain with it. Now I know I can use it to transform people's lives. That when I get up there on stage, people actually want me to be good. When they go to my courses, they want to have massive value. And then I'm changing lives nationally and internationally. I'm having a major impact, and I'm meeting some of the most beautiful people, the most wonderful people I ever met in my life. So that's how I transformed what was perceived pain and perceived pleasure. People will have misassociations that cause variations in pain and pleasure perception. Anthony Robbins always gives a great example. He says, well, 
What if you're a little baby and you're walking across a couch and you take a left or a right turn as appropriate and you fall off the couch? You're, you're going to feel massive pain and you're going to be staring at a couch. You might start associating pain with couches and think couches start causing pain. That couches literally equal pain. And when your mom tries to put you on the couch, you might start to cry. That's a misassociation. Later, you'll make new distinctions and you realize, no, falling causes pain. <laughs> and you'll correct that misassociation. But we have a lot of misassociations with what's pleasurable and what's painful that we carry through life. So I just want you to understand that. So as you're using the concept that people always move towards pain, uh, I'm sorry, away from pain and towards pleasure, that it's perceived pain and perceived pleasure. We'll give you many examples of this as we go through the course. So, you actually live in a place called virtual reality. You think you live in a reality, but you live in a place called virtual reality. See, we act on perceptions and misperceptions, which is correct and incorrect information the same. If we think it's real, if we think it's true, we act on it the same. Hitler's PR man was famous for saying, if you repeat a lie often enough, everybody will believe it. He wasn't wrong. They're still using it in politics, and they're still using it in advertisement to this day. They know that if you set something up to look a certain way, it's perceived a certain way, that will be taken to be true. Unless corrected, unless interrupted, unless disputed, unless shown to be wrong, a misperception a lie will be perceived the same as true reality. So, there is no difference between illusion and reality. In marketing, they know that the illusion is the reality. What I present to you will be taken as true. Not true reality, but perceived reality. Now, special note about pain and pleasure. They've done a lot of studies on this. In the average study, they find that people will do two and a half times more to avoid pain than to gain pleasure. I remember somebody gave a great example one time. They said people would do two and a half times as much to stop somebody from stealing $10,000 from them than they would do to gain $10,000, which is what? Pleasure. So hear that again. You would do two times as much to stop somebody from stealing $10,000 as you would to gain it, even though they're both what? They're identical. They're both $10,000. They both have equal worth. So as you're trying to motivate others, as you're trying to motivate yourself, realize what is more motivating, what causes people to take more action, avoidance of pain. Absolutely. Now here's your last concept to wrap up this part. There is no such thing as an unselfish act. A lot of people will argue this, but it's absolutely positively true. We are completely, completely driven by self-interest. You won't take the slightest action, remember the pain-pleasure model, unless it's maximizing your pleasure and minimizing your pain. Remember, perceived pain and perceived pleasure. So sometimes it will seem the opposite. People say like, well, what about people like Mother Teresa? I guarantee if you told Mother Teresa, hey, you're going to work in a factory and you're going to twist nuts on bolts and you're going to do that for the rest of your life and that's going to save millions of crying children. She would never have done it. Why did she do what she did? She did it because she was impacted by the people. It caused her massive pain to see them in pain, and it caused her massive pleasure to see them relieved of that pain, to see the joy, to have the benefit, to have the satisfaction of that. So she was completely driven by self-interest to do that. If she had to do it in a factory from a million miles away, saying, well, it's nice I'm saving these people, but I really can't see it, I really can't feel it, she wouldn't have maintained the motivation over the years. She wouldn't have been able to do it. I remember there was an episode of Friends, and Joey, 
and Phoebe were arguing back and forth about is there such a thing as an unselfish act? And Joey said, well, here's an unselfish act. I'll give you my muffin. And Phoebe said, oh, thanks. That's very nice. And he said, see, that's an unselfish act. And Phoebe said, but Joey, did that make you feel really good that you gave me your muffin? And he goes, yeah, it kind of really did. Oh, that was your benefit. It wasn't an unselfish act. Martyrs think they're doing everything unselfishly. I give and I give and I give and my children just don't understand and I'm doing everything. I'm so unselfish. I unselfishly give everything. I've given my entire life to these children. No, you haven't. You perceive not being a giving parent as massive pain. You perceive giving as massive pleasure and you get a lot of secondary benefits from this woe is me, <laughs> uh, I'm such a great person and everybody else is bad, that's a gain for you by playing the martyr. How many people actually like a martyr? Being a martyr isn't a great thing, but the person who's being the martyr, they see it the way I described it to you and they gain massive pleasure from that. They think that is fantastic. I guarantee you, what anybody is doing, they're doing something nice they're doing something bad or even evil. They're doing it because they think that's the way to get ahead. They're weighing out the pain and pleasure of it in their, in their mind. And they come out ahead. Even thieves, people that scam you and rip you off, they say, hey, wasn't that funny pleasure when we conned that guy? What an idiot. And they get massive pleasure from that. Then they're counting their money and they're like, damn, this is massive pleasure. And they mitigate the guilt by saying, hey, I taught them a valuable lesson. I only screwed them out of a couple of hundred dollars. That's a $60,000 education. This will keep them from getting screwed in other areas in their life. You know, idiots need to get spanked. I'm providing a public service here. Fool and his money are soon parted. It's not my fault. See how they wrap the logic around it? So they avoid pain of being this evil person. They actually act like they're doing a public service. They have massive pleasure around it. It's fun for them. They feel skillful. They think it's funny when they con people. They get the money. Win, 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 win. Why wouldn't they do it? Now, an honest person perceives conning somebody as massive pain. You're a bad person. You gyp somebody. If you're religious, you're going straight to hell, <laughs> you know? And they gain massive pleasure by being a good person. They find a dollar in the ground. They go, hey, is this your dollar? And somebody could be lying, but they give it to them, and they're so happy. Why? Because I just proved I was a good person. I just get this surge of endorphins. Notice the quote-unquote good person and the bad person are doing the good and bad acts under the same rules, under the same laws, and to gain the same result to avoid pain, and to gain pleasure. Each is using a different system to get to the exact same place. And neither of them is being unselfish. Make sense? Great. Let's go on to the next section.